today we're starting back the discipline challenge so i'm gonna run every morning and i'm also gonna write a game plan every day and review it every day so let's get started All right, so pretty disastrous run. Ran about two kilometers, 2.5, and I'm just out of shape. So it's a good thing that we're back on the discipline train. And now it's 7.50, so we're gonna go back home and start getting ready for the day. Hopefully there's good ups. You know, there was MF last week that closed really strong. Maybe it's gapping up or gapping down, we'll sure see. By the way, at any point during this video, don't forget to check out the link in the description. I did link all the best tools for day trading that includes broker, scanner, charts, and newsfeed. So let's get back in the video. All right, so this morning we mainly have MF, as I mentioned before. We do have also Tesla, it's gapping down on some acquisition news. And there's also this sticker SFFD. So the plan mainly on MF would be for it to trap below VWAP for like, you know, 20 to 35 minutes and then start to reclaiming and probably just get long for like a spike. And then after I would probably be done with the ticker, except if it breaks like high, higher day, like really late in the afternoon. SFVD, um, kind of the same scenario. It's a small cap with no dilution and like 7 million shares float. So at this point, kind of the same thing. It never really ran on high volume before. So if we open, we have a little spike, we go weak and we reclaim VWAP some point during the day, I would be interesting, just not in the first like 15 minutes. Uh, Tesla would just need like a really big setup uh, for it to happen, but I don't really feel like trading Tesla. I just, it's just so hard to trade. So I generally try to avoid it but if it's a really premium setup, then I would consider. And we're about six minutes from the open, so I'm gonna take a quick walk and we're gonna be ready to go. All right, so this morning was uh, eventful. I traded much more than I thought I would. Um, I was definitely lacking some discipline. Um, but I think the ideas that I had were okay. It was the only, the only ticker that was like pretty shit was MF, but it also traded like absolute trash on Friday. So it's kind of not surprising. It was just trading like it was trading the day before. But the best one was this SVFB or some, something like that. I don't remember the exact ticker, but the small cap I talked this morning, it did pretty much what I thought it would. And there was something really important and it's the stock closed below the 75 cents the prior day. So the halt band were gonna be really tight today. So when it starts to like pop up and like rip, it's gonna halt. So if people are short, it's gonna skip their stop and you should have some panic to the upside, you know, some capitulation, like absolute parabolic. That's pretty much what we had. I got a really good trade on this. All right, so that was a good lunch. Now we're gonna talk quickly about the new rules I implemented. Just because I wasn't trading well, I was still getting by, but I was just having those random days with like really big losers, so I wanna avoid them. So the best way to do that is to add new rules and also to follow them. So the biggest one for me that I thought it was gonna help me save a lot of money was the no trading for the first 20 minutes. So this could also be like 15. It, it just no trading mainly through the open. Let the stock at least, you know, have a bit of a trend or a setup before taking anything. 
And this is just gonna avoid me buying like breakouts right of the open or shorting breakdown that just reverses because these have been kind of my worst because sometimes I'm just giving it way too much room. So I end up with like a big loser at 935 and the rest of the day is just about digging yourself out of a hole. So I really wanna avoid that. It's gonna be better for my brain and for the trading rest of the day. Um, the next thing was a ticker max loss. I already have a max loss that I don't go over but a ticker max loss. This is something I never did, but it's gonna be pretty important because I realized, I think it was on MF on Friday, I lost around 2,500. And I was like, this is just too much. The stock wasn't trading well. And before that, I was up like at a, like 1,500 or 1,600 on the day. So I just went from up 1,500 to down like 1,500 or something like that, or even more with the fees. but. Very tilting stuff, and this can all be avoided by just, you know, uh, having a ticker max loss. So that means if something is trading really bad, yes, I'll get locked out, but on that ticker. So that's gonna be a big important thing. Any continuation trade also must be above the morning high or the morning low or below the morning low. This is gonna be important just so I don't get chopped in range because I realized that in the afternoon or even like at two o'clock, I sometimes start to trade stocks that are in a bigger picture of a range. So I wanna make sure I only trade stocks if they're really above, like, you know, there's a lot of volume, there's a lot of eyes on it, or they're breaking below the low after like a two hour, three hour consolidation. That would make, you know, more sense. So that's, these are pretty much the rule. Now I just need to get a little walk and then after I'll do my review because it's still a bit early. There's still a lot of stuff, stuff moving. I won't be trading because I did look at my PL. And that's also a rule I have. If I look at my PL, I don't trade for the rest of the day. Um, it's for me to avoid trading my PL. So I don't trade it with it open. I just look at my position, position average price, and I can kind of know what's what I'm up or down on the day. Today I thought I was down, I'm actually up, so which is a good thing. But these are little things that can really help you. So what I'll do is go for my little walk, afternoon walk, and then I'll do my review and all that stuff. I don't think I'm gonna have a long walk because now it's raining and it's been a shitty summer. But overall, I took the effort to actually go for a walk, so that's good enough. All right, so we're gonna be going over the main trades of the day. And it wasn't like a great day or anything like that. It wasn't a bad one. It was just a, like a meh kind of day. So, it is what it is. So the first trade we have is on MF. Uh, we can see that I bought pretty much every top and I ended up just losing like one R on this. And this one, I pretty much break even on the trade or lost like a tiny bit. Um, I really don't mind this trade. So I'll, I'll bring the e-signal chart to make it make more sense. Um, it is a day two. So the stock already made like a massive move uh, from the you know 48 cents all the way to 250 the prior day and it gapped in the after hour. Uh, when I see something like this, it's like a stock that's very in play. The volume yesterday was like 126 million and all that. So I have a couple of scenario. So if we open a week, I really don't mind getting along these because it's pretty rare that they just crash. They're normally gonna have a big bounce. And for this one, I did have a reference in terms of stocks I was, I was looking for. So I'll bring the chart. So it was on UCAR and it was back over here so we can see that it had a similar day on like really high volume and this was the following day so if we look at the you know the the first day over here we can see that you know it had like a really big move then this is the second day so this is exactly what i was looking for you know we push down we kind of chop around and then over here you know yeah we did trap but then after that we have this like really big push that's mainly what I was looking for uh, on the stock I traded, which was MF. So uh, it just ended up being so sloppy and kind of surprised it was that sloppy and didn't even give a push back to like these pre-market high. I thought they were gonna at least bring it back into these level and that would have made more sense. So that's why the execution do look like this over here. Nothing crazy or anything like that, uh, just like you know, a trade that you look stupid like any losing trade pretty much. So the following trade was a bit better. 
So this one was the one I talked about that, you know, there's no dilution. It's a very tiny float. It also closed the prior day below the 70 cents range. So it was going to halt a lot today. So I kind of been expecting that. So the trade was pretty much uh, just a reclaim or like, you know, I wouldn't call that a wedge, but just a reclaim of VWAP going for a pre-market, uh, going for a high of day break. And I didn't take any profit in the 180. I should, you know, it was a pretty good entry at the 130 to 170. And then I stopped that over here. And then I try to get uh, get back in for the following trade, which this one was better, you know, the 170 to 220. So I thought it was a pretty good trade. And we can pretty much see that I just bought it right over here, going for the break of this open or the, the market hour high, I would say, or just this pivot. And then we had this pretty nice push, you know, came back into that pivot. And I just went back for the break of the higher day. And this is a junker, like this is an absolute trash stock. So I'm not thinking that, you know, this is going to be a great stock. It's a great buy. It's strictly a momentum uh, trade based on the halt band. So thinking that, you know, because it's a stock that's going to halt a lot, if you're short, there's so much risk involved. It could be one of these stocks that goes from one to 10 to 15 and just keeps on halting and halting but it's just on the way down you know if anything would have went wrong and things would have went crazy and they would have had like an offering which they can't even do maybe it would have went to like 85 cents 84 cents so i could maybe lose you know 50 percent or 30 percent but i can't lose really more than that versus if you're trying to short this going into the halt, this could have easily go to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I wouldn't even be surprised. So it was a, a stock very similar to also MF, not today, but the first day. Uh, we can see that you know, same same type of stock, right? A stock that that op that closed into the fifty cent, and then you know had like you know a nice push higher, then kind of had this wedge, and then just started to halt for like a dollar, right? If you're short risking pretty much high a day and you didn't really cover right away, you're pretty much down uh, a point on the trade, right? So it's a pretty big move. So this is what I was looking for and this is what I captured. Uh, so overall happy with the trade. And I think, you know, it's a trade that I knew what I was doing. I was talking pre-market kind of what I, I wanted and I executed decently. I mean, this was a bit greedy. I should have definitely sold at least 50% or more. Uh, but just, you know, he halted down pretty quickly. Then I was like, oh, wait for a bounce. Next thing you know, the next halt is over here. It is what it is. So, uh, like not a day to brag home about or anything like that. Just a decent day, you know, made about uh, 2R, I would say, on this one. Lost about a 1 point something. So up like 1.5R or something. That's going to be the day, you know, nothing crazy, nothing bad. Just an average day today. Peace.